Hey guys, it's Aremia, and I'm bringing you an in-depth dinosaur guide. This will be a lot like the Crusadia guide I did a while back, so there's a lot of timestamps if you just want to skip around. There are several ways to build dinosaurs in Yu-Gi-Oh! So I'm going to walk you through the cards and the different roles they can play, as well as the different options you can run. And after all that, I'm going to go through some combos. Um, I actually have some dino tutorials up on the channel already, so I might reference those since the video is already going to be pretty long as it is. Anyway, let's start with the core dinosaur package. So Soliding Oviraptor has two abilities. First off, when he is summoned, you can search any dinosaur from your deck and either add it to hand or send it to the graveyard. The vast majority of the time, you're going to be adding it to your hand. And his second ability lets you destroy a dinosaur on your board and then resummon a dinosaur from the graveyard. Oviraptor is one of, if not the most important dinosaurs in your deck and he's being unlimited, finally freed to three copies of him. I'm really looking forward to it. He's vital for the dinosaur combos. He can either search your combo pieces or he can search UCT himself, so he can even help you break boards as well. Miscellaneosaurus, on the other hand, if Oviraptor wasn't the most important dinosaur, Miscellaneosaurus definitely is. Um, he also has two abilities. You can discard him. When you do that, all of your dinosaurs during the main phase are protected from your opponent's activated abilities. So by activated ability, that includes almost everything your opponent is going to do. Whether it be Ash Blossoms, Impermanences, Nibiru's, anything short of a passive ability like a skill drain, Miscellaneousaurus is going to protect your dinosaurs and either help you set up your board or break your opponent's board. Um, his second ability is also really, really good. He can banish himself and a handful of other dinos if you want to summon a dinosaur from your deck. Usually you're going to be banishing just himself and then summon uh, Animadorned Archosaur. Speaking of which, Archosaur, when he is summoned, allows you to destroy a dinosaur either in your hand or on the field, and then he adds Double Evolution Pill to your hand. Double Evolution Pill is also really important for the deck. Your Animadorned Archosaur won't work if you don't have Double Evolution Pill in your deck. You can use it to banish a dinosaur and a non-dinosaur in order to summon Normally, UCT, or if you're playing Dino FTK, you can summon a level 8 Dino, or even Overtex Quatloose for a Spell Trap Negation. The Baby Dinos, the other linchpin of the deck, usually you will run all three copies of Baby Sarasaurus and either one or two copies of Petit Pteranodon. These cards, when they are destroyed and sent to the graveyard, you get to summon a dinosaur from your deck. So that also helps to extend your combos and you can do some pretty ridiculous things with them. Finally, we have UCT, Ultimate Conductor Tyranno, one of, if not the best main deck boss monsters in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! I don't think I'm going too far to say that. He is extremely powerful. UCT has a lot of abilities. First off, his summoning condition is banishing two dinosaurs from your graveyard and he will special summon himself from your hand. Second, during the main phase, you can destroy a dinosaur in your hand or on your field and then flip all of your opponent's monsters face down. So that won't stop fusion summoning, but it will stop synchro, exceeds, and link summoning. And it has the potential to completely turn off your opponent's turn. And then finally, if that was not enough, he can attack all monsters your opponent's control and if he attacks a defense position monster, he gets to send it to the graveyard, not destroying, he sends it to the graveyard and burns your opponent for a thousand damage. So if your opponent has four monsters on board, he attacks every single monster and at minimum does a thousand damage per defense position monster. So he can just tear through opponent's boards, helps you break boards and swing for the win if you are stuck going second. So UCT, incredibly powerful. Of course, we also have stuff like Fossil Dig, which is the spell card that lets you search dinosaurs, as well as Lost World, which is the dinosaur field spell. It can summon a token to your opponent's side of the board, which can turn off stuff like infinite impermanence. It can extend you by having Oviraptor try to destroy the token and then destroy a baby dinosaur from your deck instead. 
and it can even chain block to protect from Ash Blossom. I'll go through kind of how they all work together once we get into the combos, but next up, let's go over the most common engine that you are gonna run with dinosaurs, which is the Scrap Engine. Scrap Raptor, Scrap Chimera, and Scrap Golem if you choose to play him, and then of course, the Scrap Wyvern in the extra deck. Scrap Raptor is right at home in the deck. His whole theme is destroying a monster you control, and then giving yourself an extra normal summon, which you will then use on your Scrap Chimera. And if it itself is destroyed, it can search a Scrap monster from your deck. That includes if it destroyed itself. So you can normal summon your Scrapter, destroy itself with its ability, and then immediately search your Chimera, summon your Chimera. Chimera will then special summon your Scrap Raptor back, and then you can use those two monsters to go into Scrap Wyvern and continue your combo that way. Scrap Wyvern, very powerful card. It lets you summon a scrap monster from your graveyard, usually your scrap raptor, and then destroy it right away, which is really silly. And then because a scrap monster was destroyed on your side of the board, he can summon a scrap monster from your deck, which will usually be the scrap golem or another copy of scrap raptor, and then also destroy a card on field. So if you are going first, you could use Lost World in conjunction with Scrap Wyvern to try to destroy the token and then destroy a baby dinosaur from your deck instead. And that will let you do a lot of crazy things with dinosaurs. Or you could always set up to have a baby dinosaur on your board already and pop that and then continue your combo that way. And I mentioned the Scrap Golem. Golem is usually what you'll summon off of the Scrap Wyvern. He is just a level five that lets you resummon your Scrap Raptor and then continue on with your crazy dinosaur shenanigans. Now, Scrap Golem is kind of a garnet because you can't really do a whole lot with him if he is in your hand. So if you choose not to play him, you can just summon a second copy of Scrap Raptor from your deck and the combos generally work out to be pretty similar. So now that we covered the primary cards of the deck, we can go over some other dinosaurs that you can play. Dino Wrestler Pankratops is probably the most well-known of these. He's a very popular going second uh, board breaking card because you can special summon him for free basically and destroy one of your opponent's important cards. He can also get around stuff like Skill Drain because his effect resolves in the graveyard and that can be really helpful because dinosaurs have a pretty significant problem with uh, back row floodgates. So Pankratops can be a really important part of your board breaking strategy. Another way you can break boards is Doggeran, the Mad Flame Kaiju. Um, he is a dinosaur kaiju, so he's searchable by Oviraptor. And you probably already know, kaijus are really helpful at breaking boards. There are a lot of times where if you just kaiju your opponent's most important thing, they'll just scoop it up because they know you're probably just gonna swing in for the win that turn anyway. Giant Rex is another option. I don't play as much anymore, but he is still really good if he is banished, for example, uh, from summoning UCT or using your double evolution pill. He special summons himself back from banish zone to your field, and then you can use him again to overlay for Lagia or Dulka or Synchro Summon for Borolod Savage Dragon or Appaloosa. There's a lot of different routes you can take him, so he is still a good card. I just find that he bricks a little too much and dinosaurs already have a problem bricking, um, but it is totally up to you. Next is Overtex Kowatlus. He can destroy a dinosaur monster in order to negate the activation of a spell or trap. So he is another option for setting up crazy boards where you have a lot of negation and you're just preventing your opponent from performing their game plan at all. He also has the upside of if he is sent to the graveyard, he will actually add a double evolution pill from deck to hand, which is pretty cool. Next up is the Dynamorphia package. And the reason you play Dynamorphias is Rex Term. This card is ridiculous. If you don't know what it does, first off, it is a floodgate that prevents your opponent from activating any monster effects that have attack greater than or equal to your life points. And to go along with that, you can pay half of your life points to make all monsters your opponents control have attack equal to your life points, so they can't activate any of their abilities. 
Of course, in order to summon Rex Term, you would play stuff like Dinomorphia Thoritzia, Diplos, as well as Dinomorphia Frenzy. Frenzy is a trap card you can activate during your opponent's turn. You pay half of your life points, because that's kind of the whole Dinomorphia theme, is paying half your life points, to fusion summon Rex Term from your extra deck by using a Dinomorphia fusion monster and a Dinomorphia monster in your deck. And considering Dinomorphia Thoritzia is a dinosaur, we can summon her off of the baby dinos, set the Dinomorphia Frenzy, and then go to activate it during our opponent's turn. Rex Term definitely gives me some Mighty Morphin Power Rangers vibes. Tyrannosaur! Yeah! yeah! But it is a very strong card if you choose to play this engine. And finally, we have the Doodle Dinos as the, the last kind of dinosaurs that could fit in the deck. Um, I, I don't think they're as good, at least not yet. There are only three Doodle Dinosaur cards in existence right now. We haven't gotten anything else yet, but once we do, I have a feeling Stego is going to be really good. If we get a good Doodle book that he can search, running Stego and running Tyranno might actually be the way to go with the deck. Um, it's just not quite there yet. However, I do find them pretty fun to use. Their art is amazing, of course. And Tyranno, you can actually tribute summon during your opponent's turn by tributing a dinosaur. And then he's another way you can destroy something and interact with your opponent. Um, the downside is he is another level eight and you can't really combo with him. So, you know, play what you want. I actually run Tyranno sometimes because I think he's really fun. Next, let's get into the non-dinosaur cards, and we can start off with Token Collector. Token Collector is so good, you guys. There are a lot of situations where you can't quite combo correctly, but if you have Lost World, you can just summon Token Collector, either from your hand or graveyard, and do the whole attempt to destroy the token, protect it with Lost World, pop a baby dino from your deck, and then suddenly you're just into your combo. And he is also a really good target for Small World, if you want to play it. Now, if you were like me, and you tried to read Small World, it was ridiculously complicated, and you just shut down, stopped reading it, and didn't play it in your deck. That was me for a long time. I don't blame you at all. But I'm going to try to explain Small World in the simplest way I possibly can, okay? There are three steps to playing Small World. You banish a monster in your hand. We'll call that monster one. Step two, we pick a monster in your deck that shares only one thing with monster one. We banish it, and we don't think about monster two ever again. And finally, we pick the monster we wanted in the first place, and we add it to our hand. That's it. That's all Small World is. And a really good target for Small World is Token Collector, because he's level four, earth attribute, and not a dinosaur. And that shares one thing with most of the cards in our deck. So Small World, I know it seems really complicated, but if you just run it with Token Collector, you'll usually be able to pull the card that you want to. If you're still feeling hesitant about it, just craft the one, push the shiny button, and then pick the monsters that Master Duel just brings up for you in the list. And then it'll kind of click eventually after you've used it a couple times. Another engine that we can run is Dragonic Diagram as well as True King Lithosagem. I find this engine really fun because Lithosagem has the potential to pop two baby dinos, get a ton of value, and also banish three cards from your opponent's extra deck which can really ruin a lot of strategies. Like Salamangrate comes to mind. You usually only have one access code talker and Salads desperately need the access code in order to swing for the win usually. It's also really good at banishing stuff like Chaos Ruler against Dragon Lynx or getting rid of the opponent's IP Mascarena so they can't like try to do their crazy sprite stuff. There's, there's a lot of options for Lithosa Jim and I think he's pretty good. Again, it's, it's totally up to you how you run it. I'm gonna show off some example deck lists toward the end of the video to kind of show you how you could incorporate these different cards together. All right, so really quick, I wanna go through the extra deck before we move on to combos. Most notably, we have Evolzar Dulka and Evolzar Lagia. 
They require two level 4 dinosaur monsters, and we have plenty of strong level 4 dinos to choose from. Oftentimes, you'll find that you have enough monsters on board to go into Dulka and fight through your opponent's hand traps while you're performing your combo. Other good level 4 options include stuff like Baguska and Duggaris. If you're familiar with the channel, you know I really like Duggaris. He does a lot of things for the deck. He can double UCT's attack all the way up to 7,000, which is huge considering he's swinging at all of your opponent's monsters. He can draw you some cards to try to find an answer, and he even functions as a monster reborn in a really interesting Dino FDK combo we're going to show toward the end of the video. Other than that, we have Link Karibo. It is really important because we need a way to get our Animadorned into the graveyard for Miscellaneousaurus to banish it and himself and summon a baby Sarasaurus for our combos if we're stuck normal summoning our Animadorned. And then we have Secure Gardena, which is a really interesting tech as well because we can use Link Karibo to Link Summon Secure Gardena, and that will put an extra non-dinosaur in our graveyard to banish with Double Evolution Pill. Pentastag is another tech choice. It can give UCT piercing if you would deal more damage through piercing than you would through the send and burn effect. And other than that, we have a bunch of good generic cards that you see kind of everywhere. Borload Savage Dragon, IP Mascarena, Unicorn, Appaloosa, Access Code, and Underworld Goddess. These are all just really good, really strong generic monsters that everyone can kind of run and we're no different. Because we churn out a ton of monsters, we can use them just as effectively. And if you look at Dino FTK, the extra deck is going to look pretty different because we have to dedicate a lot of space in order to execute the FTK. Cards like Chronomaly Machumek, Phantasmal Lord Vishbalkin, Power Tool, Geomathic Magma, and more. We will go over the roles those cards have once we get into the combos for Dino FTK. So with all that said, let's go ahead and jump into some combos. All right, so to start off the combo portion of the video, I'm going to show off the bread and butter dinosaur combo that you will use in one way, shape, or form in every combo that you do. It consists of a combination of two cards. Almost any combo of the two cards on screen should get you to this board or close to it. This time we're going to use Baby Sarasaurus and a Miscellaneousaurus. So let's go ahead and find our Miscellaneousaurus, and I'm going to go ahead and turn off the response settings so we don't get a ton of triggers. Um, and these other three cards in my hand, I'm going to do my best to ignore, okay? Activate Miscellaneousaurus. He is going to protect our dinosaurs during the main phase, so even if our opponent were to effect Veiler or try to use Nibiru, our dinosaurs would survive through that effect. Activate Miscellaneousaurus in the graveyard. We can banish itself to summon Animadorned Archosaur. Our shiny dino is going to pop the baby in our hand. And let us search a double evolution pill that we can use to summon UCT toward the end of the combo. And Baby Sarasaurus is going to summon Oviraptor. Oviraptor activates and searches another copy of Baby Sarasaurus because we have not normal summoned yet. We can go ahead and normal summon that baby, and we can kind of loop them. So Oviraptor has two abilities. One is to search, and one is to destroy a dino on board, and then resummon a dino from your graveyard. So the graveyard, I've mentioned in other tutorial videos, is stacked the bottom to the right. So we're going to summon this one on the right. If we summon the one on the left, we would just be resummoning the one we just destroyed, and then nothing would happen. So we're going to summon this one back. Activate, and we're going to summon a Scrap Raptor. Activate Scraptor. Pop the Baby Cerasaurus, and it is going to summon a Petit Pteranodon. And now, we can go ahead and activate Scrap Wyvern. Now, this is probably the weakest part of the combo, the part that is most susceptible to interruption or negation because Scrap Wyvern is not a dinosaur, it is a dragon, so Miscellaneousaurus isn't protecting it. Um, if you are trying to counter dinosaurs, Scrap Wyvern is one of the best targets to counter. Otherwise, you could Ash Blossom either the Babysaurosaurus that went to the graveyard first, which would try to summon Oviraptor, 
or you could Ash Blossom the Miscellaneous Saurus Banish to summon a monster. Um, those, since they are not dinosaurs on board, are not protected by the Miscellaneous Saurus effect. So those are kind of the three best places to counter or negate dinosaurs before they get their crazy combo going. So anyway, back to the combo. We're going to use Wyvern, summon back our Raptor, and destroy it right away, which is still very silly to me. Now we're gonna activate Wyvern. And really important, if you already have Chimera in your hand, you do not want to activate this ability because then you would add the golem from your deck to your hand and then you'd be sad. So we're going to hit cancel. Normally we would activate it and then search the Chimera. And now we're going to summon the golem and pop the Petit Pteranodon. This time we can summon any level 4 or I'm actually going to pick Pancratops because I think having a targeted negation as well as what we're doing is going to be pretty cool. So now let's go ahead and activate Golem, bring back our Scraptor for like the third or fourth time. We're going to keep using it because <laughs> that is that is how crazy the combo is. And now we can go ahead and Link Summon Appaloosa using Scrap Wyvern, Scrap Raptor, and the Scrap Golem. Put Appaloosa over here. That is going to be a 3 material Appaloosa, so 2400 with 3 monster negates. Pretty good. And we're going to summon a Scrap Chimera. And bring back the Scraptor once again. And we had to order it like this, so we put the Scrap Wyvern in our graveyard. That way we could go ahead and summon our Borolode Savage Dragon. Awesome, activate him. And we can equip the Wyvern to Borolode. Now, lastly, to end off the combo, we're gonna go ahead and use Double Evo to banish some monsters from our graveyard and summon the big boss monster of the deck, Ultimate Conductor Tyranno. And that is the combo. So we have three monster negates on Appaloosa, an Omni negate off of Borolode, a targeted destruction off Pancratops, and, of course, the UCT board flip um, by destroying the Scrap Chimera that we left over. So, that is just two cards. Pretty darn good. So now let's go over some variations of the combo before we start getting into the more advanced stuff. So in this example, I want to show you what happens if you get stuck with a Petit Pteranodon in your hand and you don't have a Baby Sarasaurus. So we're actually going to ignore these three other cards and act like we just have Miscellaneousaurus and the Petit Pteranodon. The combo is not as explosive because Petit Pteranodon can't summon another copy of itself like Baby Sarasaurus can, um, but we can still set up a pretty good board. So activate Miscellaneousaurus protect our dinos during the main phase. Activate once again to summon an animadorned archosaur from our deck. Activate and send off this Petit Pteranodon, adding a double evolution pill. The Pteranodon is of course going to summon a Soliting Over Raptor. And we have not normal summoned yet, so we can actually search a baby Sarasaurus. So normal summon this one. Activate Oviraptor. Send off that baby. Bring back the Petit Pteranodon. And now we can go ahead and summon a Scraptor. This time Scraptor is going to destroy itself. Bring back a Scrap Chimera. Normal summon. Bring back the Scraptor. And we are going to go up to Scrap Wyvern with the Chimera and the Animador Darkosaur. And it's pretty similar from there on. So we can summon Pancratops, go for a Lagia right now with these two monsters on board. That's going to give us a Spell Trap negation. Golem is going to bring back the Chimera and we can go for Appaloosa with these three monsters right here. And then we can go ahead and activate Double Evolution Pill, banish some cards, and summon Ultimate Conductor Tyranno. 
And there you go. We have uh, three monster negates on the Appaloosa, a targeted destruction with Pankertops, a spell trap negate with Lagia, and of course the UCT board flip. Um, because we started Petit Tyranodon, we end up missing out on one extra monster. So the Scrap Chimera or Scrap Golem that would have been left over isn't there. So UCT would have to destroy either a monster that was in our hand that we couldn't summon or maybe the Lagia after we use its negation. Um, but still, it's it's pretty good. That kind of shows you why we run three Baby Sarasaurus and only the one or maybe two Petit Tyranodon. But that's what happens if you get stuck with just the Petit Tyranodon in your hand. So let's keep going. Now, sometimes you'll have kind of awkward hands where you don't have any babies or Oviraptor and no way to search them. Um, and you just end up having a Scrap Raptor and a Miscellaneousaurus. So you don't end up getting the full crazy board that you can normally get, but you can still go somewhere. So let me show you really quick how to at least maximize a, a bad hand. So Scraptor, going to pop itself, search Chimera, bring back the Scraptor, and we might as well just pitch the uh, Miscellaneousaurus. All right, and now we're going to go for Wyvern. And before we activate Wyvern, we want to activate Miscellaneousaurus. Banish itself and the raptor to bring out a baby Sarasaurus. Now we can activate Wyvern because we have a target for the destruction. It won't just have to destroy itself. Well, we'll obviously summon the Chimera, destroy itself. That way we can go into Golem. And now we can send off this baby and get into Soliting Over Raptor. All right, so uh, the downside here is that we've already used our Miscellaneousaurus Summon and Oviraptor doesn't have any targets that he can destroy to bring something back from the graveyard. However, uh, what you can do is search a UCT. Of course, we have UCT in our starting hand. Um, so we're gonna grab this to replicate it. <laughs> um, but you could search the Ultimate Conductor Tyranno Scrap Golem is going to bring back the Chimera. And you can go for a three or four material Appaloosa, whatever you want. I'm gonna go for a four material this time with all four of the monsters we have on board. Oops. I'm gonna go for a three material Appaloosa. <laughs> That's fine. And then, because we have the Baby Sarasaurus and the Oviraptor in our graveyard, we can banish both of them to summon UCT the traditional way. And if you do go for a 3 material, then you'll have a monster on board that you can destroy for UCT, so it's not a bad decision either way, I don't think. It just depends on if you have a monster in your hand that you could destroy in order to get UCT's uh, Book of Eclipse effect. So not the craziest board, uh, but three monster negates and a UCT is sometimes still enough to win games. Uh, it really just depends on how your opponent draws. So in this combo, we are going to include the Dynamorphia engine, and you've already seen the beginning of this combo several times, so let's skip forward. All right, so we've just gone into Scrap Wyvern here. Gonna bring back Scrapter, pop it right away and go to summon Golem and search Chimera. And when we go to send off Petit Tyranodon, we can actually summon Dynamorphia Thoritzia. So when we summon Thoritzia, her special ability lets us set a Dynamorphia trap card from our deck to the field, which will be the Dynamorphia Frenzy trap card that lets us go into Rex term on our opponent's turn. But we are not quite done. We want to set up as many negates and locks as we possibly can because that is the name of the game. So what we are going to do here is summon Chimera, bring back our Scraptor, 
And then we can go up to Appaloosa. With three materials, make sure we get the Wyvern in the graveyard, so when we summon Borland Savage, we can equip it. So let's go ahead and bring back the Raptor once again. All right, and we will equip it with uh, Scrap Wyvern. Go up to 3850, so he has two counters on him. And to end our combo, we're actually going to go for Overtex Coatloose this time because it is a spell trap negation on top of all the negates that we already have. So go ahead and summon Coatloose right there. You could, of course, go for UCT or Pankertops or whatever you want in that situation. Now, this was only with two cards, so if you had a third card, like a Lost World, you could probably go even a little bit further than this. So we will pass turn and just summon the Rex term as soon as we can. Let's go ahead and use our Frenzy. So we are going to go ahead and summon Rex term from our extra deck by sending a Dynamorphia Fusion from the extra deck and a Dynamorphia Monster from the deck to the graveyard. You don't have to use Kentrogena. She is an ultra rare. Stealth Bergia works just as well, and it's a super. And there we go. So to sum up our board, we have a Spell Trap Negation, three monster negates on the Appaloosa, a monster effect Floodgate with Rex Term, and an Omni Negate with Borload Savage Dragon. This game is ridiculous, but that is the combo. So for these next several combos, we're going to go over Dino FTK, which stands for first turn kill. So killing your opponent before they even have a chance to draw a card. Obviously perfectly balanced. This is modern Yu-Gi-Oh. So I do actually have another video on the channel where I go over the Dino FTK combo in more detail. That one is specifically Lost World plus Soul Eating Oviraptor, but I show the entire thing. Whereas uh, this time we're going to focus on the beginning portions of the FTK because the second half of most of them ends pretty much the exact same way. So to save you time, we're just going to go over uh, what's different about each of the different starters and combo routes. This time uh, we're going to go over Scrap Raptor plus Lost World. So let's go over, uh, let's go ahead and activate our Lost World, summon Scrapter, and as always, we're going to ignore these other cards in our hand. Cool, cool. Scrapter, destroy itself. And we're going to search a Scrap Chimera. Summon Chimera with our additional normal summon from using our Scrapter. Re-summon the Scrapter. And summon a Scrap Wyvern. All right, Wyvern is going to bring back either one. Doesn't really matter. Not for this one, because we've already used the Scrap Raptor uh, search this turn. And we are going to summon Scrap Golem from our deck and then attempt to destroy the token, protect it with Lost World, and pop a baby from our deck. And then we can go ahead and summon our OV Raptor. Activate and search for a Miscellaneousaurus. Okay. Pitch the Miscellaneousaurus per its own ability. And then we have three dinos in grave, so we're actually going to banish Miscellaneousaurus and the other copy of Scrap Raptor to summon a baby from our deck. Oviraptor is going to loop them here, so he destroys one and then brings back the second one. And then this one is going to summon uh, Animadorned Archosaur. So Archosaur activates destroys this uh, baby Cerasaurus, adds a double evolution pill, and then we want to summon a Scrap Raptor. And from this point on, it's pretty much the same. We have a board of Transverser pointing to a uh, Phantasmal Lord Ultimate Abyss Balkan, and a Scrap Golem that has not yet used its ability. So what do you do if you start with Scrap Golem in your hand? Well, you can still get the FTK, so let's skip ahead a little bit. So now that we have Scrap Wyvern in play, we obviously can't summon our Scrap Golem from our hand. 
but we can still get there. So let's go ahead and activate our Scrap Wyvern and summon back the Scrapter and destroy it right away. And we're going to activate our Scrap Wyvern, of course. And we're going to go ahead and activate our Scrapter to search Chimera. But we will not be normal summoning the Chimera. Uh, because we have to use the Scrapter's extra normal summon ability to normal summon this golem, right? So we're going to pop our baby and go ahead and summon another level 4 dinosaur. It doesn't matter which one you pick, so let's just go with uh, Miscellaneousaurus. And now we can go up to Magma. Let's use these two right here. Summon Magma to this leftmost zone. Alright, and now we can activate Double Evolution Pill. So we're going to banish our Animadorned and the Chimera that we searched. Cool, cool. And now we can summon our Doggeran. And we can go into Phantasma Lord. Ultimate Ulbish Balkan. All right, we're going to activate, summon three tokens, and of course, leave the opponent's middle zone empty, or this right one if you choose to summon Bishbalk into this middle zone, um, where Oviraptor is right now. Now what we can do is summon Transverser. And we can normal summon by tributing off one of these tokens to summon Golem. Go ahead and summon Scrapter to our opponent's side of the board. There we go. Activate Transverser. Swap Control. And go up to Garden Rose Maiden. Activate. Grab our Black Garden. And then we can activate the Black Garden. And finally, go up to Machu Mech. Which will put uh, Bishbalkin down to 7,000. But because we're special summoning a monster, Black Garden will activate and give our opponent a token. Which will put one last monster on board for the 8,000 burn damage. There you go. This is probably the most complicated combo that I have ever done. It's completely ridiculous. So if you're interested in this one, buckle in. It lets us do the FTK as well as keeping Evolzar Dolka on board so that we can have monster negation. So say if our opponent is drawing a ton of cards with max C, we can kind of race them because we'll have two monster negates on our Dolka and we can potentially still FTK through their max C. So for this one, it is pretty much the same any two of the uh, dinosaur cards, any two of the dinosaur combo cards. So what I'm actually gonna do is turn my response settings off so I don't get a lot of extra triggers with this Ash Blossom in hand, and we're gonna completely ignore these other three cards. So we're gonna summon Animador. Send off a baby. Grab a double evolution pill. All right, now we are going to search Oviraptor. Summon and then search for Miscellaneousaurus. Activate Miscellaneousaurus. And we are going to go for Link Karibo. Cool, cool. Now we can activate Miscellaneousaurus, banish itself and the Animador to summon a, another baby Ceresaurus. Activate Oviraptor, pop this one and resummon the second one. That way we can activate that other baby and special summon a Scrap Raptor. 
Excellent. Activate Scraptor. Send off baby number two. And again, special summon any level four dino. Miscellaneous Saurus works here. And now we can go for uh, Evolzar Dulka. So we're going to use Oviraptor and Miscellaneous Saurus. Summon Dulka right here in this zone. There he is. Um, and if you're trying to follow along, do try to put your monsters in the same zones I'm putting them in because it does matter for um, a good bit of the combo. So activate Scrap Wyvern, resummon our Scraptor, and destroy it right away, of course. Still ridiculous to me that that's how that works, but anyway. Uh, Scrap Wyvern, Chain Link 1, Raptor, Chain Link 2. That could be flipped, it doesn't really matter. Um, add Chimera to hand. And then summon Golem from our deck, and Wyvern is going to destroy itself. Um, now, we're actually going to activate our Golem. Resummon Scraptor for the third time? <laughs> I, think it's the, I think it's the third time. Um, and now we can Synchro Summon for Power Tool Braver Dragon. Now you might be thinking, we just got rid of our level 5. How are we going to get into Machu Mech? And it is roundabout and ridiculous. It, it's like quintessential 2023 modern Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, but we will be able to do it at the end. So let's activate Braver. Send the Life Extreme Equip spell that we just equipped from our deck. And target itself. Now Braver gets to change its own battle position. That doesn't matter. Uh, the important part is when we summon him, we can equip him with this Life Extreme uh, Equip spell. When it's sent from the field to the graveyard, we get to tribute our power tool and then summon Lifestream Dragon. Lifestream Dragon is a level eight tuner. All right, you don't need to activate that. He just has the ability to uh, make your life points become 4,000. It, it's like an old 5Ds era thing that's like, oh, if you're losing, you could go all the way back up to 4,000 and maybe still have a chance of winning. But this is 2023. We're dealing 9,000 damage to our opponent on turn one. So um, now we can activate double evolution pill. We're going to banish a baby Sarasaurus and we're going to banish our power tool Braver Dragon to summon Doggeran. All right, now we can go for uh, Bishbalkin. Summon him over here and activate. All right, now what we can do is use one of these tokens to go up to Link Spider. All right, and that Link Karibo we used earlier, we can reuse its ability, tribute a level one, and resummon it. Um, the only reason we're having to summon it from the graveyard is because this combo started uh, normal summoning Anabadorned, uh, which means we had to use Link Karibo to like kind of work through our combo. Um, it's kind of cool that you can still bring back the Link Karibo and continue with this combo, but if you were to start like Miscellaneous Saurus and a baby or Soul Eating Over Raptor and a baby, stuff like that, it's, it's basically the same route. Now we can go ahead and use both of the Link monsters. Um, because Geonator Transverser requires two effect monsters, and we just transformed two of our normal tokens into effect monsters by Link Summoning, because it's a perfectly balanced mechanic. Summon Transverser to the zone pointing to Bish Balkan. Now we can summon our Scrap Chimera, finally, that we searched ages ago, ages and ages ago, and resummon our Scrapter for like the fifth time, I have no idea. Okay, now what we're going to do is overlay for Duggaress, the Timeless. Yes, I know, the combo is still not done. Duggaress has three abilities. We're going to use this middle one to detach both of his materials and special summon a monster from the graveyard. So we're going to detach both and resummon our Scrap Golem. 
Scrap Golem is, of course, not a hard once per turn because it's a pretty old card. Uh, once again, 5D zero. Um, so we're going to summon our Scrap Raptor yet again to our opponent's side of the board where Transversor is pointing. And now the, the combo is pretty self-explanatory because we're going to go up to our level 5 Synchro with the very last token that we have. Uh, might as well activate it. We can grab Black Garden. Uh, activate Black Garden, but even if we didn't activate it, we would still have uh, enough damage. The Bish Balkan would be 8,000 instead of 9,000. So summon number 33, Chronomaly Machu Mech. Activate Machu Mech. Targeting Vish Balkan, deal 9k. And we had two monster negates throughout that entire thing. So let's go over some deck examples really quick. This one is going to be Scrap Dinosaurs with the Dinomorphia engine. You can of course play more Dinomorphias if you want to lean into that archetype more. But I find this deck is really good at just setting up this impregnable board where you have stuff like two spell trap negates, several monster negates, Rex term on board, and maybe even a Dino Wrestler Pankertops pop. There's a lot going for this deck, and given that it's dinosaurs, you have that crazy two card combo to get into everything. However, I will say that dinosaurs do tend to brick, and adding in stuff like Theritzia does make the deck a little more inconsistent. This deck is going to be including the Token Collector engine, which I am a huge fan of. Using Token Collector with both Lost and Small World works really, really well. And Small World can definitely help smooth out your draws because it can turn a bad hand into a really solid two card combo. And this last deck is of course Dino FTK. Now you saw a lot of the Dino FTK combos so you do have two options as far as the level five synchro goes. You could either play Garden Rose Maiden with the Black Garden. That does help you push for that extra bit of damage if you made a mistake somewhere or if you had kind of an awkward hand in order to get into the FTK. Or you could play Ally of Justice Cataster. He is another level five and lets you get away with not having Black Garden in your main deck. So there is one fewer Garnet that you could run into. This deck trades some of that going second power in favor of a ridiculous turn one where you just kill your opponent on the spot. I don't know if Konami would ever ban something for this deck. I know they don't really like FTKs, but their banning strategy with Master Duel has been really weird. If they did ban something, I feel like it would be Bish Balkan because it's just asking to be broken like this. There are also other decks where summoning monsters to your opponent's side of the board doesn't really matter because you end up removing them all on your own turn anyway before your opponent gets their second turn. Otherwise, if you are okay with playing FTK, it can be pretty fun to just completely wipe out your opponent before they have a chance, or better yet, to kill your opponent through a max C where they draw 25 plus cards and you still end up winning. Now, I gave you a lot of tools for what to do going first, but going second is half the game. Unfortunately, it's really more of a case-by-case -case scenario. I can give you some cards that are good going second, but it will depend on your opponent's board state as well as the meta at the time. I think Ash Blossom, Called by the Grave, and Infinite Impermanence work really well going first and second, so those are good choices. Dark Ruler No More has been a favorite of mine recently because of sprites. You can effectively remove their entire board and leave them with nothing. But we are also about to get Tier Laments, which is another Tier 0 broken deck. Uh, Dimension Shifter is really good against them, but it is terrible with dinosaurs. If you want to see dinosaurs in action, check out my other dinosaur videos on the channel. That should give you a pretty good idea of what they can do. So now that you've seen pretty much everything that dinosaurs has to offer, let's go over the pros and cons to the dinosaur archetype. For the positives, dinosaurs have a very strong boss monster. 
UCT is insane and is probably the best main deck boss monster ever printed. Dinosaurs have some crazy end boards off of two card combos, even as far as an FTK before your opponent can even draw their card. And they have potential to go first or second because of how strong UCT is. But the negatives, dinosaurs can definitely brick. If you don't get into your two card combo, there's not a lot you can do. Dinosaurs can also be really expensive. For some reason, there are a lot of ultra rares that make up the core of the dinosaur package. And even more if you're looking to add in other engines. And finally, dinosaurs are unfortunately easily negated if the opponent knows what they're doing. Before we end the video, I want to give a huge shout out to Alan He. I had a rather lengthy discussion with him over Dino FTK and the different ways you can build the deck. And it helped me a lot when I was working through the Power Tool Braver combo. So thanks, Alan. You rock. Well, that was a long one. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys found that helpful. If you made it this far, please consider leaving a like. This video was a ton of work and it helps out a lot. If you have questions or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I will try to get back to you. I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you in the next one.